Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Bintu Ali Sumwadu. Welcome. Now, President Muhammad Buhari says the assistance of the United Nations and international community will be invaluable in reversing the devastation visited on Nigeria by the Boko Haram insurgents. A statement by the media, special, by the special, a statement by Femi Additional, special advisor to the president on media and publicity says, the president was chatting with the president of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly at the State House Abuja. President Buhari added that the damage to infrastructure, particularly in the North East has been horrendous with bridges blown and schools, hospitals, mosques, churches, as well as other buildings destroyed. And all these will be rehabilitated and every form of international help is welcome. The statement also quoted President Buhari saying about 30 million people, half of them Nigerians, are negatively affected by the shrinking lake charge and solicited support for the recharge of the lake through inter-basin water transfer from Congo River. The Anga president on her part commended President Muhammad Buhari for being a key part of the United Nations system, saying, saying the country is well respected in the global body and is lauded for being a major contributor of troops to peacekeeping operations. Moving on, Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Onyama has assured that Nigeria will continue to play a prominent role within the United Nations system as it addresses domestic challenges and partners other nations to resolve global issues. The minister, who met visiting UN General Assembly, expressed optimism that Nigeria will be given the opportunity to lead the 74th General Assembly. Assembly Foreign Affairs Correspondent Makut Simon Machap reports. President of the 73rd General Assembly of the United Nations is in Nigeria to discuss, among other issues, the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, Regional Peace and Security, Nigeria, and the transition to the 74th General Assembly of the United Nations, among others. This interaction with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyama, raises issues relating to Nigeria's role in global development, as well as domestic management, taking advantage of multilateral platforms. Uh, we are a government and uh, a country that believes in multilateralism. Uh, we believe that uh, in the globalized world of today, um, the future really rests with multilateralism to address all the various problems and challenges uh, uh, of the world. Maria Espinosa commends Nigeria for playing a key role in regional and international engagements, a development she says makes her suitable for many responsibilities, including the presidency of the 74th United Nations General Assembly. Uh, Nigeria is a very strong, reliable partner of our organization and our system. We are uh, very, very, uh, very much looking forward uh, to working together with Nigeria uh, to have a smooth uh, handover and transition process for the incoming uh, Nigerian presidency uh, to the 74th session uh, of uh, the General Assembly. The two express confidence that challenges of insecurity, underdevelopment and migration will improve with more synergy between Nigeria and the United Nations. In Abuja, Makut Simon Macham, NTA News. Now, the Acting Inspector General of Police has briefed the Senate on security situation in Nigeria, during which he stated that the force is fortifying its intelligence and technology to check crimes, especially kidnappings. Ignatius Nkot reports. Well, on Tuesday, 30th of April 2018, the Senate considered a motion on increasing cases of kidnapping and other security challenges in Nigeria, especially Kaduna State. That motion was uh, moved by Senator Shehu Sani. And then that day, the senators resolved that Acting Inspector General of Police to come and brief Senator Plenary on measures that the Nigerian police put in place to ensure that these challenges are addressed. And that is actually what happened here today. And we have with us here 
Senator Kapiru Gaya. He's here to tell us some of the outcomes of this meeting. Thank you once again for joining us. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we were so worried today, and uh, we had discussions for almost uh, four, three hours with the IGO police for two reasons. One, all of us are worried what's the situation happening, not only along Kaduna Road or other places, no, the whole part of the country. He was able to explain as much as he can, and the most important thing he said which I, all of us, most all of us agreed is that he's given us his words that very soon things will improve because he has set up another tax force that will look into this matter and that they have some a lot of more information that they can work on. We talk about many things. We talk about even extortion on the road. We talk about uh, uh, people collecting bribes and so on and so on. We talk about many things on that issue. We talk about people that are highly involved into this matter, highly placed people involved in this uh, issue. So I, I believe we discussed extensively. I, I, the meeting we had today was good, and I hope that uh, he will keep his words, because I know him as a gentleman. He will keep his words, and let's see what improvement we can get. But I'm appealing them that whoever they find wanting in this matter, whether highly placed, either a, prison, either a district head or a real, anybody, 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 Irrespective, whoever it is, let them let them bring you to book. Oh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Well, the, well, the significance of this meeting was actually observed when the Senate had to step down almost all the items on the order paper to enable the Senate have an exhaustive meeting with Inspector General Police. Thank you, Ignatius. Now still on security, the Air Tax Force of Operation Diramikia has recorded a milestone against armed bandits in Zamfara State by destroying the camp of a major kingpin, Al-Haji Lawan, and neutralize, neutralizing up to 20 of his fighters near Rugu Forest in Zamfara State. According to the statement by NAV Director of Public Relations and Information, Air Commodore Ibikolera Ramola, this was accomplished in a down attack executed on April 26, 2019, after credible intelligence indicated that the, the notorious kingpin was camped along with dozens of his fighters at a statement at a settlement about four kilometers west of Rugu Forest, where he keeps his logistics supplies, coordinates operations and launches attacks against security forces as well as innocent civilians. Consequently, following detailed confirmatory intelligence, surveillance and reconna reconnaissance missions, the ATF dispatched one Alpha jet and an attack helicopter to strike the camp, destroying their structures and other logistics supplies which were seen engulfed in flames as shown in a now classified video. No Fewer than 20 armed bandits were neutralized in the air strikes. Now, Bayelsa State Governor Henry Dixon has commended the Nigerian Navy for assisting in reducing maritime crime on Bayelsa waterways. In a statement by the Special Advisor to the Governor on Media Relations, Fidelis, the Governor gave the commendation during a courtesy call on the Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Ibiko. Ibok Ete Ibas. The governor stressed that the efforts of the Nigerian Navy has helped in curbing piracy, crude oil theft, illegal bunkery, and other waterways related crimes. The chief of naval staff used the opportunity to thank the Belsa state government for giving requisite support to the Navy and to aid performance of its duties within the maritime domain. Now, various trainings hold in Lagos. For details, let's join Dotsung. Thank you, Bintu, and welcome to the Center of Excellence. Drug abuse in children and teenagers with a resultant negative effect was the focus of a six-day training for secondary school principals in Lagos. Nosa Usula reports. Today, Drug abuse is quite prevalent in our society. Teenagers are more prone to getting addicted to drugs than adults, and there may be several reasons for this. 
It could be due to peer pressure, failure in love life, stress, or lack of parental supervision. Dr. Martins Osaede, Executive Director for International Society of Substance Use Professionals, said the training of principals of secondary schools will go a long way in curtailing abuse of drugs in students. One could have fleet of cars, could have houses. If someone's son or daughter is involved in substance abuse, all this can disappear in the twinkle of an eye. The person on drug is sick, the family members are sick. Sometimes parents do not know on time. So those signs, those what to look out for, because we need to help these children. Students in secondary school where we are principals uh, to prevent their starting the use of psychoactive substances. And uh, if there's any of them that have started, uh, to be able to control. For the family, it has negative effects because the dream of the parents for the children is not realized. Students were urged to report incidents of drug abuse to the appropriate authorities in their environments. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. Providing quality training with a view to churning out competent and skillful workforce in the power sector is the focus of a training program for young Nigerian electricians in Lagos. Paul Omukago has details. Against the background of reported cases of electrical faults due to poor domestic and industrial house wiring, the program seeks to improve the skills of electricians in line with global best practices. NAPTIN, whose partners are working towards reviving all its training centers nationwide through the training program, hopes to boost access to energy, empower electricians, and provide the platform for sustainable growth in the sector. We are really out to ensure that we optimally make best use of this program to ensure that we drive jobs, we drive issue of safety, and then we equally ensure you know, standardization. We want uh, here in Nigeria the electricians to uh, meet the international standards when it comes to electricity and to be sure also that we are improving the access to electricity to a large part of the population. Making sure that installations are safe, making sure that wiring are well done, making sure that appliances work well. So we are looking at it holistically. The training hopes to capture as many Nigerians as are willing to make a career in the electricity subsector in Lagos, Abuja and Port Harcourt before extending it to other parts of the country. In Lagos, Paul Omukago, NTA News. The Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has dismissed the preliminary objection filed by the Attorney General of the Federation against the MTN Communication Limited over alleged 242 billion naira and 1.3 billion naira dollars imports duties and withholding tax assessment. Vera Chumba has more. MTN instituted a suit in September 2018 challenging the legality of the Attorney General of the Federation's assessment of its import duties, withholding tax and value-added tax in the sums of $242 billion naira and $1.3 billion. The plaintiff is seeking, among other declaratory reliefs, that AGF's demand of the sums from the MTM is premised on a process which is malicious, unreasonable, and made on incorrect legal basis. In a preliminary objection challenging the suit, the ADF argues that a plaintiff action is such as bad having been filed out of order. He argued that in seeking redress, the plaintiff had just three months from the date the cause of action arose to institute the action adding that same was filed out of lawful stipulated time. AGF had urged the court to dismiss the plaintiff's suit as being caught up by the statute of limitation. In his ruling, Justice Chukuje Kuaneke held that for purposes of limitation, time begins to run from the date of action accrued. In dismissing the preliminary objection, he further held that irresistible conclusion to be drawn from the narrative is that the suit is not started bad. Further hearing continues on the 26th of June. In Lagos, Viera Tumuba, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Lagos. More reports after this commercial break. Please stay tuned.
The management of the Nigeria Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria cordially invites the general public to the 14th edition of the annual Ramadan lecture, which will, inshallah, hold on Saturday, 18th May 2019. The topic is tolerance in Islam to be delivered by Sheikh Mohammed Nuruddin Lemu, Director of Research and Training, the Awa Institute of Nigeria Islamic Education Trust, Mina Niger State. The venue for the event is Lumana Multipurpose Hall, River Road, Jabi Road East, Gwarimi. Jerry Kaduna by 9 a.m. Under the distinguished chairmanship of Lamido Adamawa, His Royal Highness Muhammad Berkindo Aliyu Mustafa, the Chief Host is His Excellency Mal Nasu Ahmed Erufai, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State. Royal Father of the Day is His Royal Highness Al Haji Dr. Show Idris CFA M. M. Zezo. The host are Mal Yakubi Muhammad, Director General of Nigeria Television Authority, Mal Mansur Liman, Director General of Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, and Dr. Ostao Kichuku, Director General of Voice of Nigeria, Announcer Organizing Committee. You are welcome. NTA Television College JAWS announces admissions into two-year diploma programs in film and television production, television engineering, and broadcast journalism. The sale of forms will commence on the 13th of May and run through 30th July 2019. Admission forms can be obtained from all marketing offices, NTA state capital stations, zonal centers, or at the office of the academic secretary, NTA Television College, Rayfield JAWS. On payment of a non-refundable fee of 7,500 Naira in bank draft in favor of NTA TV College. Applicants can also obtain the forms through the NTA TV College portal at www.ntatvc.edu.nj. Applicants are required to possess five credits in GCE or SSCE in relevant areas of study in not more than two sittings, including English and mathematics. All properly completed forms attached with photocopies of credentials must be submitted on or before 30th July 2019. For further inquiries, please visit our website at ntatvc.com or call 0803-3144-383. NTA TV College, training you to be the best you want to be. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, Real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News. Breaking the news for over 40 years. Now, federal government has commenced cargo delivery by train at the Kaduna inland dry ports. At the flag of ceremony in Kakuri, Kaduna, Ministry, Minister of Transportation, represented by the Director of Maritime Service, Galadenchi, and Governor of Kaduna State, Ahmed El Rufai, said the project will not only boost economic activities in the north, northern part, but will also serve as key to Nigeria's economy diversification. <laughs> Means the end of our comparative disadvantage as a landlocked state, as this shipment clearly shows that the Kaduna Dry Port has been recognized as a port of destination as well as port of reception of all imports and exports throughout the world. Executive Secretary Nigerian Sheepers Council Hassan Bellu said the train service comprising about 20 cargoes, 20 wagons, is expected to bring in an average of 200 containers from the seaport monthly. And to do this, Your Excellency, it's uh, uh, two trips per week bringing containers, but most importantly, 
also taking out export because that is very, very important. All containers that come laden will not leave empty. The Kaduna Inland Dry Port was inaugurated by President Muhammad Buhari in 2018 with the aim of decongesting the seaport and taking shipping to the doorsteps of the hinterland. Moving on, five completed projects in the Maritime Academy of Nigeria, or on Akwaiban State, have been inaugurated by the Minister of Transportation, Rotimiya Mechi. Susan Osukwo reports that the Minister also inspected ongoing projects in the Academy put in place by the Federal Government to boost maritime training in the country. The Nigerian Maritime Academy over the years has been lacking in some basic infrastructure. And for the Academy to churn out cadets who can compete favorably with their counterparts across the globe, having world-class facilities and equipment, the minister noted, is imperative. Aside from having world-class equipment, engaging the services of professionals, training and retraining of manpower for the country's maritime industry is also very important. He has promised to hire more lecturers, especially from outside the country. The, 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 the government must enable them to do that. But key to that is that they must also train our people. Because at the end of the day, most of those who are coming from overseas will require special funds. The renewed interest and support given to the academy was commended by the rector of the academy, but emphasized that there is still much to be done in repositioning the academy to international best standards. Talking about sea time for cadets, that has been a very big challenge. But this management will resolve this problem come end of this year. Ongoing projects inspected by the minister are the male hostel and a two-in-one survival pool. These projects were said to have been abandoned for years before the present rector, Commodore Duja Efedwa, came on board. From the Maritime Academy of Nigeria, Susan Asukwo, NTA News. Now, the Federal Safety Corps is establishing additional five corridor commands in parts of the country in order to boost efforts in better road safety on the nation's highways. Corps Marshal Boboye Oyemi said this at the Capacity Building Workshop in Abuja. Oyemi Ajayi has details. With the promotion, decoration and deployment of offices of the Federal Safety Corps, they need to re-strategize operations with innovation in their daily responsibilities in surmounting highway challenges becomes imminent. Overloading and speed violations are highlighted to be major causes of road crashes in the country, and the Corps is tackling these challenges headlong. The five corridor commands will ensure better highway safety in line with the 2020 United Nations Decade of Action on Zero Tolerance to road traffic crashes. We have five critical corridors that are being covered now. Lagos, Ibadan, up to Egbeda, and that is towards Ife. Then you have the Abuja Metropolitan. We're actually focusing on Abuja Airport Road from the city gate to Giri, from Giri to Zuba, Kubwa Road up to AYA. Part of these new vehicles, 15 of these new vehicles are injecting on this corridor Then, Then you have Abuja Lokoja up to Zaria again. Then you have Abuja Kaduna up to Zaria. Then Benin Asaba up to Enugu. These are the corridors. The essence of the corridor command is that they are well equipped. Is a kind of a special squad, well equipped to ensure that one, our visibility is sustained. Number two, any removal, any obstruction is promptly removed. As the offices set out from this meeting, not just the core marshal, but Nigerians are expecting better performance of ensuring safety of lives and property. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTN News. Now, Nigeria's economic situation in the last four years has been described as stable and on the right trajectory of economic boom. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria said effective implementation of programs and policies of government have been instrumental in achieving this fit. Kule Adi reports. Reckless spendings by previous administrations compelled President Muhammadu Buhari to inherit a weak economy in 2015, which eventually nosedived into recession a year later. 
The guests enumerated policies like the Economic Recovery Growth Plan, ERGP, Ease of Doing Business, Social Intervention Schemes, and the revolution in agriculture and other sectors currently playing a pivotal role in the country's economic recovery and subsequent growth since it came out of recession. It is very encouraging for an economy that went into recession and come out of that recession swiftly. Particularly if you compare uh, what has happened or what is happening right now in Venezuela and uh, with a lesser population compared to ours and the economic quagmire they are in, then you can see that the government has really tried its best. Our GDP growth. Uh, now we are growing at 2.4% through the last quarter, the report of last quarter. And when you look, what contributes to that growth significantly is the non-oil sector, you know, which actually grown at 2.7%. Now, part of that is the manufacturing. It picked up from where it used to be in these last few years. While acknowledging the efforts of government to maintain and sustain the economic growth rate, other guests advocated more focus on the manufacturing sector to make it more competitive and ultimately take Nigerian products to the global market. The government has done very well in the area of uh, formulating and implementing economic policies aimed at you know, growing the economy, diversifying the economy, and invariably improving the welfare of the Nigerian people. We need to deal with critical issues of productivity in this economy. So we should be looking at, the government has, has, has been doing well, but we need to look a, a, a lot more. Beyond the economic gains recorded, the guests unanimously called on the private sector to be more proactive in creating a conducive business environment. In Abuja, Kunle, Adeyeye. NTA News. Now, Sultan of Sokoto calls for unity among Muslims. Sokoto Network Center is our next stop on Nationwide for news from that zone. Nora Tonko Akili will be our guide. Good evening to you and welcome to the seat of the Caliphate. President General, Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs and Sultan of Sokoto has called for unity among Muslims and proactive measures to tackle insecurity in the country. The Sultan was speaking at the graduation of 144 students of Sheikh Dahiru Bauchi Foundation for the memorization of the glorious Quran of Sokoto. Shah Muhammad Dati completes the story. <laughs> These are the 144 graduates that have memorized the Quran with ages 8 to 15. So Tom Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr were congratulating the graduates and students, charged parents to always focus on the education of their words. The monarch called for unity of the Muslim worldwide, urging authorities to take proactive measures in tackling the security challenges in the country. Sokoto and the forest governments were full of praises to the graduates, promising that governments will do everything possible to enhance the propagation of Islam. Special guest at the occasion, Sheikh Ayru Usuma Bouchi, represented by his son Ibrahim, described memorization of Quran as a blessing not only to the students, but their parents and the entire Muslim communities. Chairman of the school, Kabir Maaz Jodi, had spoken on the history of the school. He highlighted some of the achievements and challenges calling on the state government to provide land for building a permanent site of the school. The graduates were presented with brocade by the Sultan, while Sokoto State Deputy Governor gave them 500,000 Naira and the for state government for motorcycles. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Deti, NTA News. The month of Ramadan is a spiritual time when Muslims globally increase devotion and worship. Every human groups organized have seen to educate the women folk on the significance of the month in Islam as a whole. Sadi Omar Degi reports. 
Muslim across the country are preparing their body and soul to reap the benefits of the holy month. It is a time when Muslims increase all forms of worship, such as recitation of the holy Quran, supplications, and dua, which inform the decision of various women groups to establish centers saddled with the responsibility of educating the women on the teachings of Islam. Federation of Muslim Women's Association in Nigeria, Form 1, and Islamic Education Trust, IET, are some of the centers enlightening women every Ramadan. It's very important that anything you pray in for this month, God is accepted it. The Quran consists of all, uh, all, every, everything because uh, Islam is a way of life, and Allah guides Muslims in accordance with the uh, Quran and uh, Hadith. The women also have the opportunity to ask questions on issues of religion and family life. Ramadan is the most precious month in the Islamic calendar and it is obligatory for Muslims to fast, improve and increase devotion and worship in the holy month. In Sokoto, Sadia Omodigi, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Sokoto is back to being to in Abuja for the continuation of Nationwide. Thank you, Nora. Now let's talk pain profession. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday, a reporter with the Nigerian Television Authority, was among winners at the 2019 Press Freedom Awards of the Nigeria Union of Journalists in Abuja. The awards are in recognition of individuals and corporate bodies who supported press freedom in the last one year. Olabodi Arewa reports. Democracy is incomplete without access to transparent and reliable information dissemination. The media, saddled with this onerous responsibility of agenda setting, holds leaders accountable. The 2019 general elections is an attestation of the media's ability to identify and reject misinformation in its various forms. Hence, sustaining media integrity, gathered discussions at this year's Press Freedom Awards. It is our intention to make it an annual event with awards lecture that will be in tune with the World Press Freedom Day celebration. State of our union and state of our beloved nation. It is the responsibility of the media and other agencies of mass communication to uphold the fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policy and uphold the responsibility and accountability of the government to the people. Recipients of the awards for maintaining their journalistic integrity include Adebola Brooklyn Sunday of the Nigerian Television Authority, Sunday Moses Akwashike of Blueprint Newspapers, and Maida Joseph of Leadership Newspapers. Some media-friendly organizations also received awards. During my travel in police detention, really, I, I felt very bad as a journalist. At the point I was like, is it a crime to be a journalist? But today with this, really, I, there's hope. The Nigeria Union of Journalists um, recognizes the work we're trying to do at NIPC. The 2019 NUJ Press Freedom Awards is the second in the series. In Abuja, on Labo Darewa, NTA News. Congratulations to the recipients, especially our own at Depola Brooklyn Sunday. Now, 88 retirees have benefited from the 100 million naira monthly payment of gratuity in Equity State. Governor Faimi, while disbursing the checks, also assured workers of prompt payment of their entitlement. Regretting that the state was indebted on gratuities to over 12 billion naira. As at October 2018, when he took over as governor, Dr. Kari Fayeme said his decision to increase the 10 million naira being paid by previous administration to 100 million naira monthly is to alleviate the sufferings of the senior citizens who have been subjected to unnecessary financial hardship. Demonstration of the commitment of this administration to ensuring, amongst other things, that those who had used their productive years to serve the state have maximum enjoyment in their post-retirement years. Chairman of the Nigerian Union of Pensioners, the State Chapter, and some members commended the governor for the gesture, which they believe will go a long way at improving their living status. The governor promised us 
when he was campaigning that uh, he's going to pay our gratuity and they is fulfilling it. We are not surprised about the laudable achievement he's making. The exercise is on the basis of forced to retire, forced to be paid policy in Adwekiti, Kola, Adebabuyi, Enti News. And for more reports, let's join Kemi in our Ibadan Network Center. Hello, Kemi. Hello, Bintu, and welcome to Ibadan Network Center. Residents of Ibadan today joined their counterparts across the globe to mark the 2019 World Asthma Day with a theme, Stop Asthma. Medical experts advocate strict compliance to lay down preventive measures against attack and proper use of drugs. Correspondent Larry Billet reports that the day was marked with a sensitization walk through the Ibadan metropolis. Adenino Adesui is 61 years old and has been managing asthma for 25 years. So is 48 years old or Motayo Jimo, who has been managing hers for 16 years. To make sure they attend medical clinic always. Once I take my preventer every day, I'm okay for the day. Asthma is a condition in which a person's airways becomes inflamed narrowed, swell, and produce extra mucus, which make it difficult to breathe. In most cases of the attack, it can interfere with daily activities. In some, it can be life-threatening. The growing number of cases of persons with the disease in the country informed the need to join the rest of the world for the annual World Asthma Day. What are the lifestyle they can imbibe in their various homes to be able to reduce uh, asthmatic attack? That's what we are looking at this year. Pollutions, urbanizations, and all that. West, Western lifestyle is making the incidence of asthma to really come up now. Some of the symptoms of asthma attack is wheezing, coughing, and tightness in the chest. The theme for 2019 Asthma Day is Stop for Asthma in Ibadan. Larry Bileyi. News. And the Oba Femi Awolowo University lecturer, Professor Olayin Kadegbaingbe, who was kidnapped on Sunday evening along Ife Bado Expressway, has regained his freedom. The university don't attribute his release to an act of God. Adejo Keluyemi was at the OAU quarters residence of the professor and filed in this report. People from all walks of life, including staff of OAU Leife, were full of joy as Professor Olayin Kadegbe was released by his abductors. His residence at the university quarters has been playing host to many visitors who came to rejoice with him. Professor Adegbe, who is ill and healthy, attributed his release to an act of God. And so when they stopped me and took me into the bush, they wanted 30 million and uh, they went down so I, I told them that you have to think and talk at a less uh, price so and they settled for 10 million so it was at that level that we started mobilizing and got them so they collected they collected 5 million uh 45,000 cash some of his professional colleagues expressed their feelings. We are very grateful to God. We thank all the good people of this country for their prayer, the security agencies. My advice for the government, both federal, state and local, is that they have to beef up the security. It will be recalled that on Sunday, Professor Adegbenigbe was abducted by gunmen along Ife Ibadan Expressway. From Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Adejoke Luyemi, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Ibadan. is back to being to in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you. Now, a group of indigenous Bagi people of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT Abuja, today disrupted traffic on the Omar Musa Eredwe Expressway. The protesters blocked the highway to contest an alleged invasion on their ancestral land by the Nigerian army. They claimed that the land in contention was never allocated to the Nigerian army. We went to National Assembly just last week. There was a public hearing, investigative public hearing concerning this issue, where FCTA, who had the statutory powers to allocate land, were there 
The army, every hierarchy of military were there, and the FCDA said they have never allocated that land to Nigeria army before the media, before the whole wide world. And FCDA have also said the land they have for Nigeria army is around Kwali. If they are ready to come and take it today, where they are, they are encroaching into airport land as is in the master plan. Residents of the Federal Capital Territory who were traveling in and out of the city, including the Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbanjo, expressed an unusual god luck as a result of the protest. Efforts by security aid to appease the protesters failed until the Vice President came down from his car to address the protesters. Normalcy has since returned to the hand. Meanwhile, the groundbreaking ceremony for the Nigerian Army projects at the Muhammadu Buhari cantonment Giri Abuja turned a bit dramatic as attention shifted to a lingering land tussle between the army and community members. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa was at the event. It was supposed to be an event that would launch additional welfare facilities for army personnel but it turned out to be an avenue to explain and justify the siting of the projects as the chief of army staff, mm. Lieutenant General Tuku oh, Buratai, no, went down memory lane on how the land was acquired following protests by a group claiming ownership. This particular estate was officially granted to the Nigerian Army in 1979. We got the official allocation with the right of occupancy in 1997. In the year 2011, when all lands were revoked and all owners of land were directed to recertify the Nigerian Army, we duly applied for the recertification. We have legally and timely recertified this particular land. With that over, the groundbreaking for the project that would provide office complex for the Army Aviation, Directorate of Legal Services, Women Corps, Farms and Residential Accommodation proceeded. The state of both office and residential accommodation in Nigerian Army barracks and cantonments nationwide indeed left much to be desired. This, among several other factors, took its toll on the state of welfare and well-being of our personnel and indeed on their moral and fighting efficiency. Appeal to the civil authority to accord them support in the bid to secure the nation. From Giri in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTN News. Thank you, Ismail. Now, the People's Democratic Party governorship candidate in Ocean State, Senator Ademola Adeleki, has been arraigned before the magistrate court sitting in Mpape, Abuja, by the Nigeria Police Force on a five-count charge bordering on alleged certificate forgery. Senator Adeleki, through his counsel, Adebi, through his counsel, Adebi, urge the court to take cognizance of the two subsistent orders which were tendered before the court as exhibits given by the Federal High Court and a State High Court in Ocean State, restraining the police from arraigning him and also granted him leave to travel to the United States for medical treatment. On this ground, counsel to the defendant urged the court to adjourn the case pending the determination of the ongoing similar trials before the other courts and allow him travel as he has a flight to board by 7 this evening. Prosecution counsel Simon objected to the submission, arguing that the court orders did not state that the senator cannot be arraigned. As such, the defendant should take his plea. The magistrate Mohammed Zubairu urged agreed with the prosecution but also noted that he should not be denied the privilege to tra for traveling for treatment as granted by a higher court of competence jurisdiction. He ruled that the defendant should take his plea. After his note guilty plea to all the five count charges, counsel of the counsel to the senator Adeleke 
applied for bail, which the magistrates granted in the sum of two million naira with one surety in like sum, who must also be resident within the jurisdiction of the court. The case has been adjourned to the 24th of June 2019 for the prosecution to open his case. Another pause from this end as we go over to Enugu for more reports on Nationwide is over to Chinyere. Thank you, Vince, and welcome to Enugu Network Center. A group from the All Progressive Congress in the Southeast have appealed that the zone be allowed to produce one of the principal officers of the National Assembly in the interest of equity and fairness in the country. The group made the appeal while interacting with the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obonaya Ono in Ebony State, Kinsley Okoro reports. The delegation from the All Progressive Congress are in the country home of the Minister of Science and Technology, Uburu, or Hosa local government area of the state, not only to applaud efforts of the minister in the unprecedented support to the last elections, leading to more than 25% of votes for President Buhari, but to further reaffirm their support to the administration. The APC group believes that the Southeast Zone has tremendously contributed in the success of the party and solicited for consideration in the choice of principal officers of the National Assembly. Him to pay homage to him and uh, to appreciate him for all the help that he gave to us during the election. And we also appeal to him, uh, being the candidates of the last election, that we be carried along in all the decisions of the party, in uh, appointments, uh, in other other things so that we can build the stronger grassroots APC for 2023 election. The president has done well. Uh, we believe that the problems were so, so enormous uh, that you cannot solve them overnight. And this is why this campaign is uh, on next level. So the president is assuring Nigerians that um, in the next four years there will be uh, far more improvement. Dr. Ono emphasized the need for the people of Southeast to key into APC developmental programs in the international building. In Abakaliki, Kinsley Okuru, NTA News. Calibration services, if properly deployed, can ensure competitiveness, trade facilitation, business and economic growth in the country. This was the thrust of a stakeholder sensitization forum held in Enugu. Cheka Ugu reports that the theme of the workshop is the role of calibration on trade and business growth. Calibration is the core function of metrology. While metrology is the science of measurement, which is applicable to all sectors and aspects of life, like economy, health, environment, as well as manufacturing. The standards organization of Nigeria Sun are convinced that the nation's quest for economic diversification can be attained if there is accuracy of measurement of products and services. It is to this end that the organization, in collaboration with other institutions, developed the National Metrology Institute of Nigeria, responsible for the dissemination of measurement standards to industries, laboratories, aviation, agriculture, health, education, all this. That when we are doing what we are supposed to do, the economy of this country will continue to grow geometrically. And that is where we are talking about a just measure. Some stakeholders identified calibration as a sure way to enhance consumer protection and provide a level playing field for trade and commerce. We do a lot of measurements. We work with weights, measurements, in the long run, this helps us to determine value. There were paper presentations on effective calibration services and role of the weight and measures department in verification services in Nigeria. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. Three suspected mitatives are now in the custody of the Enugu Command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps. The suspects are helping the command in its investigation. Again, Chekaugu reports. 
One of the suspects who confessed to the crime is a casual staff of Enugu Electricity Distribution Company, EEDC, while another is a disengaged staff of the former power holding company of Nigeria, P one of the civil defense staff on guard at the EEDC headquarters followed up an unusual movement and phone calls by the casual worker and raised the alarm that led to their arrests. These things, as you said, had been happening, but this is an eye-opener to the public to be rest assured that no, such things are not tolerable. The suspects narrated their involvement. I gave it to somebody who has been persuading me for that. And before God and man, where he take his, takes the matter to, I don't know. The day he called me t t talking about that, I said, I can't do it. There was a time I, I came across a customer that uh, had a bond meter. And the customer was kind of afraid of uh, going into estimation. You understand? So I told him, please, I have so so customer like this. You know, if there is any how I can get so so meter like this, I'll be able to use it to fix the meter. Items recovered from them include one Helux van, a Benz, four double jackknife, jackknife, and two army vests. In Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. That's it from Enugu. The news continues after this commercial break. Good evening. Do you desire to improve your grammar and sharpen your pronunciation skills? If your answer is yes, then you need to attend a special four weeks course on English grammar and pronunciation for broadcasters organized by NTA Television College, JOS. The course will expose participants to the nitty gritty of English grammar and usage, which will enable them to speak fluently and write as well as edit scripts flawlessly. Journalists, presenters, scriptwriters, television and radio news editors, secretaries, masters of ceremonies, and host of live events will find the course highly beneficial. Date, 13th May to 7th June 2019. Venue, NTA Television College, Rayfield, Joss. Course fee, 100,000 Naira per participant. Accommodation inclusive. For more inquiries, please call 0803-3144-383 or 806 807 you can also visit our website on www.ntatvc.com. NTA Television College Joss, training you to be the best you want to be. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng for live streaming. Visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can beat the rich. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. Now, next is sports update. African champion Super Falcons of Nigeria departed the country Tuesday ahead of this year's Wafu B Women's Cup tournament built for Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire, May 8 to 18. Head coach of the team, Thomas Deneby, who named his squad of 20 players Monday, expects the team to do better than their third place finish at the last edition in 2018. Action returns in the Nigeria Professional Football League, which enters week 18 Wednesday with 10 matches to be decided. Enumba are away against Rivers United in Port Harcourt. Wicked tourists welcome MFM of Lagos. Group B fixture.